Welcome to Crunch Time, a program dedicated to helping you survive the crunch times in your life, whether they are caused by accidents, natural disasters, poverty, economic recession, depression, or all-out economic collapse, or whether they are caused by your realization that today's food supply is being contaminated by artificial fertilizers, pesticides, and genetically modified organisms, and over-processing of crops into what can hardly be called food. We want to help you through the crunch times in your future by teaching you what we have learned about organic gardening, food storage, and food preparation. We'll bring you into our kitchen and into our garden and share with you what we have learned, hopefully, before your crunch times arrive. Now here is Chef Francois. Welcome to Crunch Time, where Jesus is King and all our desires are to serve Him. Um, we're going to work with some leftover vegetables that we had from our church potluck dinner, which was also the graduation for our, our uh, cooking and survival gardening class. Here we have a, the largest turnip that I got out of our garden. And we used the bottom part of it here during our cooking class graduation potluck dinner to make some stir fry. We're going to cut some of that up. We might make some stir fry and we'll also do uh, a pie for sure. We also have the rest of the squash that we're going to get into. Uh, this was cut open Saturday for our potluck dinner. And we have uh, leftover daikon. We have a green head daikon. It grows like this with the uh, leaves up top and the root down the bottom. And that's spicy. We have a regular red radish, which is a long skinny radish instead of a short one. And we have some kale, and I don't think we're going to do anything with the kale today, but uh, I also wanted to show today the uh, food dehydrator, which is basically four of these trays that uh, we spread out our food onto. And I got one of them here with a bunch of the the food that I have made over the last two or three months. Uh, this here I believe was, well they're all pretty much squash except one of them here. It's got some green edges around the edge. I believe that section of it was um, zucchini back earlier in the summer. And this stuff is all dehydrated, ready to put on the shelf and save for the winter. And uh, it's good stuff. So we're just going to stack that over here for now. So we can use the dehydrator and show you how to do that. I have never dehydrated rutabaga. Uh, but I'm going to try it today. And also we're going to boil some down and, and make some pie out of it. A rutabaga is a lot more dense than any of these others. You can see when I tap on that compared to tapping on this squash or when we get into the daikon you'll see that too. I can even squeeze this right now and see some sponginess to it. Same thing with the radish. So we're going to start off by drying a few slices of squash. I've never dried daikon either, so I'm going to put some of that on there. And maybe even I'll dry some of that. So, I need to put my glasses on because I can't see too well. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut a chunk off the side here. I've got to get myself a new knife because this one broke the other day. And I was looking for another knife just like it because I'm so used to it, but see the handle came off. But anyway, I'm using it for today. 
So basically we're just going to cut them fairly thin slices. The thinner they are, the quicker they, they dry. Usually I'm using a, a round fruit. Now I'm using just kind of a triangle shape. And you just spread them out on the thing. If you're drying fruit, we have a thing that I showed in one of the other tapes you may not have seen yet. It's called uh, Fruit Fresh. And it's made by Ball, the can company. And it's basically vitamin C. And we're going to sprinkle some of that on uh, some of these fruits that we think we're going to want tangy instead of instead of uh, salty. And when you're cutting these, if you get some slivers that are just not cutting straight, either they're too thick or they're thin on one side and thick on the other, it's not a big deal. You just use them the way they are, just arrange them on your, on your pot. Like this one's real thick on one end, real thin on the other. No big deal. Hey, Ken. Hey, Ken. See this one here is thick on one side and thin on the other. It doesn't matter. It'll dry eventually. You'll just use the differences to be able to to uh, reposition those later on. If you've got thick ones and thin ones, you want to put the thicker ones around the outside of the dehydrator because that's where most of the the, the uh, air is blown. I've got one here that's thick but skinny. Here's one that's really thin. I'm going to put that on the inside. And I'm getting some here that are certainly thick on one side, thin on the other. We'll just place the thick ones around the outside, thin ones around the inside. You want to leave a little bit of space around each one so that the air can get up to the next level and dry out those as well. Now notice I'm leaving the skin on the rutabaga. Almost all fruits and vegetables that I cook, I prefer to leave the skin on, especially potatoes and uh, well, basically anything. I don't know of any that I really cut the skin off. It's really gross. I might cut part of the skin off up here because it, it's so rough that it might have some room for uh, dirt to hide up in there. But basically, I like the skin because it carries probably more vitamins then I'm probably getting these a little bit too close together here but I wanted to get them all on one shelf I'll save these pieces for later so I'll show you what we've got here it's uh, spread out fairly well so when you get four layers of this you can take the fruit fresh if you want it tangy or salt if you want it salty I usually wait until I've got all of them full so that if I sprinkle this and some of it goes between the pieces, it's going to get caught on the layer down below. But since I'm only doing one for today, I'll just do it over the sink. And we've got a fine mist on there. Floats down and stuff is really fine. So we'll put that layer on the bottom since the dehydrator dehydrates the bottom layer the most. And you just put it on the dehydrator like that and let it dry for a few hours. Now usually after an hour I will go back to the dehydrator and check it. Um, 
I don't like letting it run overnight because it might, I'm going to shut it off here because of the noise. Um, I don't like running it overnight because I've got, um, well, if it gets too dry and too hot, see, it's basically a, um, I don't know, an element out of a toaster, except not quite as big, and a fan. So it just heats and blows the air up through. Uh, some more expensive dehydrators happen to have adjustments, high, low, medium, and timers on them. Uh, this one, I don't have a timer on it, but if I got stuff almost dry and I don't want to go to bed, I do have a timer downstairs that came from my dark room from years ago. It can set up to an hour's worth of exposure time and you just plug it into the side, you turn it on to an hour, and you turn it on, you go away, and an hour later it shuts off. So, we're going to dice up everything that's left here, except for the seeds, we're going to save those. Um, now we could slice some of this and put it on the dehydrator, and I am going to, in fact I'm going to do some of these right now because I don't want to forget and uh, not have them because I really would like to see what these dry up like. You'll see when I'm doing these. I've got a round fruit here and about half of them come out round and half of them come out you know half moon, quarter moon. If you're really trying to slice them thin you're going to end up with quite a bit of of uh, non-round pieces. Now this radish that I'm using here has already lost quite a bit of its uh, moisture and we have pieces that are that are kind of hollow in the middle. can see that they are, you know, kind of broken up and, and hollow because they're dehydrating. And when they dehydrate completely, they will be, they will be just slivers of what they were before. You know, the ring around the outside will be there, but most of the most of the moisture will be gone and that will dehydrate and shrink what's left of the vegetable. So I'm going to spread these out so I know for sure I've got some in there. In fact, I might just do the rest of that whole greenhead daikon and some more of the rutabaga just so I can have none left over and when I go to make my pie, which we're going to make later, it'll be just the big pie. Because we don't really have enough for daikon pie, and we don't have enough for radish pie. Now you could cut these into long skinny slices if you want, but the radishes especially, since the skin is the, the most dense part of the radish, you just had a sliver with just the white stuff from the inside, you're going to find that pretty much disappearing before you done. So I'm just going to spread these out. I don't think I'll put fruit fresh on these because, well, I think I will. I might put salt on some and fruit fresh on the other just to see what they do look like. do taste like when they're salted or when they're sweet. And one thing I just uh, researched on how to grow uh, last night until about 2 o'clock in the morning was stevia. 
none of you know what stevia is, it is a natural sweetener. It's a plant that you eat the leaves, and the leaves are sweet. You can either just eat them fresh, you can seep them in a, a tea to sweeten your tea. You can uh, you can dry the leaves out in the dehydrator or in the sun, and then crunch them up and use it for a powder to add into cooking or whatever. And you can also get some uh, liqueur by, uh, well, they call it extract, actually. You can get some extract by soaking some dry leaves. I'm going to show you what this looks like. Don't want to tip it up too high because it'll. dried stevia leaves and put them in an alcohol solution. Uh, one that I read recommended uh, vodka and that vodka will will uh, dissolve the uh, stevenoids or whatever they call them and uh, then when you you don't boil off the vodka because then it'll get too hot. You you evaporate it off by heating it up to a certain temperature until uh, you see the steam coming off. Of course, you don't want to breathe the vodka because then you'll get all the alcohol. And uh, certainly, I don't want to have any alcohol in my body because then I don't have full control of my senses. So I'm not a drinker. I don't think a responsible person that has responsibility should be drinking. And I have a family to support. And that's a responsibility that I think is is uh, important enough not to be out of control of your senses. Okay. One more. And we'll put that on top. I'm not going to turn that on until later because we don't need to have the uh, noise. Here's my garbage can. I usually have a plastic bag in there, but since the plastic bag is going to look kind of crummy on the film, I'm just going to leave the garbage in there and put it in the plastic bag later. Okay, we're going to start off. Um, yeah, I said I was going to take, I don't think I'll pie out of the squash, but while I've got it open, this is what the squash looks like after it's ripened for a while. You'll see that there's voids in here. When it's really fresh, uh, it'll be kind of like zucchini. It'll be solid all the way over, but not very, not very heavy, not very thick. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to take out the uh, we're going to take out the seeds and the strings that go to the seeds. We're definitely going to toast the seeds later. The hardest part is to get those strings detached from the pulp. You see the, the strings want to stick very good. And if you scrape that even with a, a spoon, it just digs in to the uh, pulp and still hangs on to it. Now here, I've only got three places to dig, and that's where these clumps of seeds are. But, once again, it wants to stick really hard, and so... I usually use a spoon for this. A lot more 
more seeds in this one than I expected, actually. All right, I put the seeds off to the side here. And now, we'll get to those later. Now, I'm going to do two different configurations of the squash to put on this shelf of the dehydrator. Okay, I'm going to make slivers, straight slivers, two or three inches thick. So I've got my ring and I'm going to just cut a bunch of slivers like this and just lay them out on the dehydrator. In fact, I'm going to cut that in half so I don't have to have the other side in my way. Notice once again I'm not taking the skin off. Uh, on the radish especially, the skin kind of holds the rest of the pulp together so that it doesn't just turn into powder. And uh, fly away in the, in the breeze that's inside that dehydrator. Of course when you get down to this last little sliver, you might want to lay it down and be careful. Alright, I have a bunch of slivers here. I'll just spread them out, make sure they're not touching each other. One of them's real thick. And another configuration that we can use is uh, having rings by slicing this completely. And then that would be very difficult with this big a, a fruit. Once again, you want the thicker ones on the outside, thinner ones on the inside. there's still some strings attached to it but once it's dry those strings are gonna kind of be brittle and they'll just fall right off so it's not gonna be a big deal I don't even know if I can get all these on this this tray right here without blocking the air too much couple little slices that are mush I'm going to put in the garbage. So there is our arrangement. Plenty of air on this side especially. These here might be a little close. And I'm going to put that in my normal drying place down in the basement. I will be right back.
I use the dehydrator in the basement for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, the dehydrator is noisy and I don't want to have to listen to it. Second of all, it is dry in the basement because we have a dehumidifier down there and it's cool in the basement. So with the cool, dry air moving through the heater of the dehydrator, it dries it out that much more and then as it blows across the the fruit and vegetables, it dries much better than it would if I had the, the, de the dehydrator upstairs. Over here, we have the dried squash, radishes, red radish, and greenhead daikon. Greenhead daikon on this one. And over here we had rutabagas out here. And I did cut four slices of... Uh, I should use this in my hand here. We got four slices of squash. Most of our squash is over there. It's dried. We have radishes, red radishes, and greenhead daikons here. Greenhead daikons there. A couple of these red radishes fell through the grid. Um, they've lost their bite. They have uh, a little bit of a sweet taste. And even the rutabagas, which weren't even sweet before, good. A little bit of a sweetness to them. And so there's the dehydrated food that we've made today on the show. It's all good. I'm going to put it into Ziploc bags just like we had before and put it away. Dehydrated fruits and vegetables won't last quite as long as freeze-dried, but they will last a considerable number of months. As long as you keep them tightly sealed in a Ziploc bag, keep them in a cool, dry place, they'll be just fine. Uh, you might check them every couple months, make sure there's no uh, mold growing on them, but I don't think there's enough moisture in there to have mold if you dry them correctly. Well, here is our dried fruit and vegetables. We have squash, we have rutabaga, we have turnips, we have greenhead daikon, turnips and we fit it all into one bag after we dried it all. Here we'll give you a couple closer looks at some stills, still pictures of the uh, dehydrated fruit. In the last minute of our show I'd like to tell you about the real reason for this show. Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Without Jesus as my Savior, I would not be confident entering into these trying times that lay ahead. If Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, I suggest you send me an email at crunchtime at roadrunner.com and ask me how you can join the God who loves you, his son Jesus Christ, and his disciples in everlasting life. For now, I say to you, God bless and keep you and yours. I'll see you next week on Crunch Time with Chef Francois.